So I just wanted to show you real quick what my current setup looks like. I'll turn my grow lights off. I have these blackout curtains that I bought a while ago when I used to work night shift that I just went ahead and covered this closet door with. So that way when I'm working in here, it bluish purple light doesn't bother me. And in addition to that, I have this reflective material over top of a, help me attempt to roll it up and show you. Okay, I got it rolled all the way up. I have a five tier shelf with reflective material on all sides. And up here on top of the shelf, I just have some storage for some gardening supplies. Now I do have some seedlings in here right now. They're looking pretty good. Uh, some are looking a bit leggy. Overall, it's looking okay. And I have some goji berries going in here. But yeah, I just have the, I have these like um, grow lights set up. I have two per rack set up on these like uh, adjustable ratchet type strings. That way I can heighten it and lower it depending on the height of the plants. And I just wanted to kind of give you a look at this setup right here because this setup has worked for me for what? I, I, I've used it last season and I started off this season using this setup and I'm getting ready to actually tear all of this down because I bought a grow tent to try to set all this up in. There were a few reasons that I wanted to get this grow tent with the biggest being so that I could better control the humidity in this room. My cats had actually started a habit of trying to lay under the grow lights in the closet, probably because it's warm in there. And I don't think that could be very good for them. So I started closing the door to the room, but that caused a lot of humidity to build up during the day. And I don't want the humidity to affect my electronics I have in here or any of the projects I might have drying in here at any given time, or even causing the terrible condensation issue that we have on this back window to get worse because we do not need mold. Yeah, it, it's with adding on the, the rods and everything, this unit is going to be like, kissing the end of the bed, which is going to be difficult to get into because that's where the door is going to be. And I would really hate to set up this whole thing. I don't really have a choice though. It won't fit this way. That's what I would have preferred is for it to put it this way and have the door outwards, but it won't fit that way. So it's going to have to go this way. So I guess we'll set it up and we will deal with it for a while in, or forever, depending on when and if I come up with a better solution for where to put it. So I'm trying to think of the best way to go about having my shelf in here. And I think it's going to be nearly impossible to get this thing in here after I put this together. I think the state that it's at right now would be perfect for me to work around. No, what am I manhandling? That, I can't get that peg into that hole. It like needs to, if you, you see how it's kind of, they're, they're Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, I'm gonna go see what my dad used to say to me. What, what is you that? You gotta be smarter than the hole. He did not say that to yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Wait a second. Where's the open area? Oh. Like a bed sheet. That goes, this goes in the right corner. Where's the, where's the instructions at? You want to pull it out into the dining room, look at it, and then bring it back in? I guess. Okay, it's like nine o'clock and we finally got this sucker up. So we finally got this all set up. This is currently how I turn my lights off for this tent. It also unplugs my fans. I have a separate extension cord coming for the lights 
as well. That way the lights will be, <laughs> hi Riley, that way the lights will be on a timer and the fans will just be on their own outlet. We did have to move the bed this way. We did have it facing the headboard facing this way up against this wall right here but there was like no space at all. The, the butt of the bed was right up against here and it was really hard to get in and out of this. Now that does make this area right here really tight, but I figure I get into this closet way less than I'm gonna be getting into my grow tent. This closet just has a lot of my um, crafting stuff and I don't craft a lot during the spring and summertime because I'm too busy with my garden. I usually save that for winter time when I am looking for something to do. So for right now, we are gonna have, this is our setup. And I'm so glad that my little sewing table has a sewing machine on the underside of it. I use it as a nightstand when I'm not using it as a sewing machine. It fits so perfectly right in this area and I couldn't be happier about that. So let me show you, excuse me kitty, let me show you what we got going on. This tent is probably a little bit bigger than I needed for what I'm doing. I could have went I'd probably get the one, one size down from this. Um, I'll put up on the screen uh, what size this one is. I can't remember right now. I could have taken this back. I really could. I could take this back and get a smaller one. But with how much trouble we went through just to get this cover on, I will just take it as it is and be excited that I have this much more room for growing if I want to expand what I'm doing. There's supposed to be a rack that goes right here for starting seedlings, but I uh, managed to build around my rack with this shelf so that it would fit in here and I can still put plants right here if I want to. I probably will be able to hang some lights from here. These are like removable little arms that you can hang stuff from for this little section right here. You can also put them up here and hang them, hang stuff from there. I also have longer ones to hang lights and plants from up here. It's supposed to have a like um, side door because the way this was uh, supposed to be is this was supposed to be, this section over here was supposed to be a seedling starting area and this is supposed to be the grow out part of the tent. But I'm not using this tent for what most people use these grow tents for. I'm just using these for food seedlings. So I don't need that small of a seedling starting area. I need the whole thing to start seedlings. So I went ahead and I didn't know I was buying a two part tent when I did that. I made it work anyway. I could convert this back to what it was original, the way it was originally supposed to be used if I wanted to, but I can't ever see myself needing to do that. So it does have an extra door right here, but Considering mine is against the wall, I won't ever be getting into it over here. It also has these little view windows. It has a uh, fabric Velcroed onto the outside so you can peel the fabric off and look through it. You can also use it as a vent. It has mesh on it. It's got one uh, down here on either side, which I will not be using. They've also got holes all around it. I don't know if you can see that. I have cords coming out of mine, but I believe these are not just for uh, cords. They are also vent holes for you to put like piping through if you have a carbon filter on your tent for growing things that are a little more explicit than what I'm growing and they have a smell to them. People attach carbon filters. That is what I found out a part of my research when I was going to get this tent. So that's a cool feature of it. I probably will never use it. I have these fans right here that I clipped on. I have four more of these that came in a pack of six for like 30 bucks and they clip on to the poles right here very nicely. So I'm ex I was excited about that. I was worried I would get them and they wouldn't fit quite well. But six fans for 30 bucks and they clip onto the poles when I saw the the Vivo Sun, like name brand fans meant for like sold specifically for clipping on poles are about the same size and they're like almost 30 bucks a piece just because they clip onto a pole. I thought that was a little bit ridiculous. So I took a chance on these Genesis brand 
fans. They're six inch fans and they do perfectly. I'm going to set the rest of them up clipped here. Not only does it circulate the air well to make for healthier plants just because um, the air is moving and not stagnant, but it will also provide some movement for the seedlings, which helps them grow healthier stalks. That way, when you take them outside into outside conditions, they're not just going to fall over. I've got some extra trays and pots and bits and things for planting up here. Right now I got my grow lights kind of funky because I have some stuff that's just starting down here and some pretty taller stuff down here. I need to hang this set of lights so that I can uh, fix this situation here. I also have this foam cooler down here which I want to experiment with some hydroponic lettuce once it gets too hot to have lettuce outside and we'll kind of see how that goes. I do have a tray of lettuce that was right here that I repotted up yesterday and it is outside right now acclimating and what I'm going to do today is get these uh, kale and cabbage and I think I have a few more lettuce over here. We're going to get these repotted into these three inch pots right here because I right now they're in these four inch pots and I have two to three plants per four inch pot. So we're gonna put them into their own pots and get those acclimating outside as well. And my grow tent did come with this like tray insert. It's technically for the bottom of this, but as you can see, this tent already has a bottom to it. So I'm not sure why it came with an extra insert tray. Maybe it's so you can take the insert tray out to wash it out and clean it up. I'm not too concerned with how dirty it gets in here. I can use a broom and a rag to wipe it down if I really need to. So I have been using this as just like a repotting piece of fabric. That way I don't get dirt all over the bed and it has been working out pretty well so far. Honestly, these are probably big enough that I don't need to repot them individually and harden them up before planting them in the ground, but I haven't had time to prepare my end ground garden for some of the stuff that I want to put in here anyway, so I'll just go ahead and pop them up that way if it takes me an extra week to get my in ground garden prepared, then I don't have to worry about them getting stunted. This is going to take me a while, so I'll just show you what it looks like when I'm done. All right. There they are. Our little seedlings all potted up. Well, they're a little past the seedling stage now. <laughs> but I have some romaine lettuce, some salad bowl lettuce. We've got red cabbage, cauliflower, we have some Dutch cabbage, some mystery brassica that was not labeled. I thought it was kale, but now that it's coming up, that looks more like broccoli to me. And I have some lettuce over here that is from, uh, I believe, some icebergs lettuce seeds that I saved from last year. So I'm going to go ahead and water these ones in. So now that we have gotten those outside acclimating, I will be taking those out every single day this week to get them used to the outside conditions before we get them planted in the in-ground bed. I also have some preparation that I wanted to do for the in-ground before we start putting stuff in there. I have to get some more soil and I want to get some weed barrier put up around the edges. So I will be bringing you along with me for that and I'll also bring you along with me this weekend when I get some seedlings started in the tent for the summer garden. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you next weekend. Thanks. Bye.